Hi everybody, this is Jeremy Miner, Technical Agronomist for Kruger Seeds. Welcome to the Spring 2020 Social Distancing Edition of Kruger Seeds Agronomy Corner. With our spring in-person pre-planting meetings being canceled, I wanted to make sure I reviewed with you a couple of topics that I think are very important before this planting season starts. I want to talk to you about the new corn and soybean technologies that are coming down the pipeline at Bear Crop Science and Kruger Seeds. I want to talk to you about sulfur and its role in crop fertility. We'll take a look at the spring 2020 weather outlook, and then we'll talk about having a plan for 2020's planting season. The next evolution in corn trait technology comes from taking the proven stock and ear protection of VT Double Pro and adding AgriSure Viptera. When you add those technologies together, you get above ground protection called Tricepta technology. You know, as I look back on walking fields in the fall of 2019, I can tell you that the amount of ear damage and kernel tip feeding from these above ground pests was pretty significant, especially if you walked fields in South Central and Southeast Iowa. So. I'm glad we were able to latch on to 107-day and 112-day products with this Tercepta technology in it, and I think you'll notice the impacts as well as we go forward. I'm also excited to talk to you today about how our Roundup Ready Extend crop system is expanding. Soon, we will feature our first triple-stacked herbicide trait-tolerant option in soybeans called ExtendFlex soybeans. ExtendFlex soybeans will be tolerant to glyphosate, low-volatility dicamba, and glufosinate herbicides. Currently, we expect final EU authorization of ExtendFlex soybeans to come sometime in the mid to late spring 2020 timeframe. To support the launch of ExtendFlex soybeans, we are building robust field trial plans in order to provide as many opportunities as possible for our customers to learn about ExtendFlex soybean varieties in the Kruger Seeds lineup. Confidence continues to grow within our customer base in spring approved Dicamba products in the Roundup Ready Extend cropping system. Over the past two years, we've seen a 95% satisfaction rate in weed control. And when you add in the 14-day soil residual activity that Extendamax provides, we can certainly keep fields cleaner longer than our competitors. I want to change gears now and talk a little bit about soil fertility. Specifically, I want to talk to you about the nutrient sulfur. Though not listed as a primary nutrient, sulfur is actually ranked fourth in importance behind nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Sulfur is needed for many plant functions, including photosynthesis and chlorophyll formation. We used to get most of our sulfur needs from the atmosphere from pollution, but due to the reduction in sulfur dioxide from anti-pollution laws, the increase in crop yields, and the lower use of sulfur-containing pesticides, our sulfur needs have actually increased over recent years. In order for sulfur to be taken up by plants, it has to first be converted from its elemental form into its usable form called sulfate. Plants rely on microorganisms for this process. The first step is called immobilization, where microorganisms consume inorganic compounds. And then, as those microorganisms die off and excrete organic waste, like sulfate, this process is called mineralization. On average, approximately 3 to 5 pounds of sulfur are mineralized each year in every percent of organic matter in the soil. Sulfur uptake in corn will happen all season long, but it really takes off around the V5 to V6 growth stage. A general rule of thumb is that for every 10 bushels of corn produced, you'll need approximately one unit of sulfur. Remember, different fertilizers contain different amounts of sulfur, and that can impact how much you'll need to apply. I recommend applying sulfur in the spring, but it should be considered any time you apply nitrogen fertilizer. And pay attention to things like soil type, soil texture, and percent organic matter, as these factors can impact sulfur's movement and availability in the soil. An important thing to remember about sulfur is its mobility. Sulfur is actually mobile in the soil, so it does have the potential to leach through the soil profile, much like nitrate nitrogen, but at about half the rate. This is important especially if you have sandier, lighter soils on your farm. In plants, it's a totally different story. Sulfur is immobile in plants, so once it's in there, in the leaf or a root, it stays there. And when a plant starts to run out of sulfur, the first place you're going to notice the deficiency symptoms will be in newer leaf tissue in the upper parts of the plant. Soybeans with sulfur deficiency will appear stunted and have a pale green to yellow appearance to them. Corn plants with sulfur deficiency will display an overall yellow appearance, but upon closer examination of the leaves, you'll notice yellow striping between the leaf veins. Striping can be a symptom of other nutrient deficiencies like manganese, magnesium, or zinc, so it's recommended that plants be tissue sampled in order to positively identify which nutrient is deficient. I think if you work in agriculture, following the weather is pretty much something ingrained in your DNA. 
My education and training is in agronomy, so I'd like to take this time to recognize Dr. Dennis Toddy, who helped put together some of the info we're going to look at in this 2020 weather outlook. Dennis is someone who's actually trained to pay attention to weather trends in agriculture, and he is the director of the Midwest Regional Climate Hub. The hub helps link USDA research programs and agencies together to deliver ag-related weather information to producers and professionals. Spring has pretty much sprung around the state, so if we take a look at the average 4-inch soil depth temperatures for March 25th, you can see we're well on our way to pushing the rest of the frost out of the ground. This map shows the root zone soil moisture to the depth of about 1 meter. The darker the blue on the map, the more moisture in the root zone. This map is actually from 2019, and I'm sure I don't have to remind you that the Corn Belt was pretty saturated during this time. This is that same root zone soil moisture map, only looking at March of 2020. As you can see, much of the Midwest and Corn Belt is very heavily saturated in the root zone right now. These are the temperature and precipitation forecast maps for the month of April. On the temperature map, you can see Iowa and much of the Western Corn Belt are predicted to be about normal for temperatures. But when you look on the right, there's a big bullseye over the state of Iowa, and there's a high percentage chance that we are going to be much wetter than normal come April. These are combination forecast maps for the months of April, May, and June. As you can see on the temperature map, much of the United States, including the upper Midwest, are predicted to be above normal for temperatures during these months. And then, forecasted to be above normal as well for precipitation for much of the upper Midwest and southeastern Corn Belt. Looks like a wet one. If there's any silver lining here, it's that forecasts and weather are always changing. Though the trend indicates that Iowa will have a little bit of a wet spring, we can always cross our fingers and hope that everything comes together and we'll have wide open planting windows so we can get the crop in on time in 2020. To wrap things up here, I want to leave you with some key things to think about before the planters head to the fields. If we've learned anything from previous planting seasons, it's that we need to show up ready to plant any field, anywhere, at any time. We need more than just a battle plan to manage risk, we need a battle binder. One way to help manage risk is by planting new genetics alongside some of our proven performers. This helps test a new product's placement, showcases its agronomics, and its yield potential from our pipeline. Another thing we can do is to plan a wider window of relative maturities. This can help offset potential weather-related risks like green snap and corn. Another thing to review in the battle binder is seed treatments. If you have a field that stays cooler or wetter longer, make sure that you're putting a product out there that has a high rate of an acceleron seed treatment on it. Seed treatments are going to help your seed power through those cool wet conditions that we have and promote more even emergence. And then review your product's agronomics. Always, always, always review your agronomics. That's going to help you place a product right where it needs to go and give it its highest opportunity for success. I know it's easier said than done, but I tell guys don't get rammy at planting time. Fields need to be fit, and fit is a relative term these days, but we need to do our best to get those seeds put in a nice seed bed that allows them the best chance to be successful. Get your herbicides on timely, especially your pre's, and make sure you're using multiple modes of action with overlapping residuals to keep those pesky weeds at bay. Plans can change quickly in the spring, so be ready if you need to to call an audible with herbicide applications or product changes from field to field. Patients can run out quickly when there are planning delays, but in my experience, staying the course with your original product choices has been a much safer bet than trying to outguess Mother Nature. Considerations for relative maturity changes should start around May 20th for corn and June 20th for soybeans, so we do have some time. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to pick up the phone and give us a call. And don't forget to sign up for Bear Plus Rewards. Signing up is easy. Have your tech ID handy, complete a quick and simple Bear Plus Rewards registration form, and validate your account. It's that simple. It's more than just a rewards program. Simply choose the products that are right for your farm and earn rewards on eligible purchases along the way. You pick the products, earn the rewards, and get the cash back. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. And don't forget about our new and improved 2020 Spray Early with Confidence herbicide program as well. We've increased our weed control guarantee from $10 to $15 and will guarantee weed control on both broadleaf weeds and grasses. And please, be safe this upcoming planting season. We can get in a hurry as equipment fires up in the spring, but we shouldn't forget that doing things safely helps get the work done and get you back home to your family in one piece. Well, that wraps up the spring 2020 social distancing edition of Kruger's Agronomy Corner. Be safe, have a great spring, and we'll talk to you soon.